This is the Jeff Santos Show. 33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We're here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time. And uh, we're coming to you live from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the South Coast, Southeastern section. As you look at the arm that comes out through Cape Cod, it's the bottom of the arm there. Uh, we are um, going to be talking with our great friend MTC in a matter of seconds, folks. Um, we will uh, be talking on Monday, of course, a uh, continuation of our cabinet discussions um, with Harold Meyerson, who's done some great work. You can go to prospect.org and find out. He has been reporting on a lot of different picks, uh, including uh, the attorney general uh, selection, um, which uh, looks to me right now like Mr. Jones, uh, the former Alabama senator or I guess he's still currently the Alabama senator, about to leave. And, um, of course, uh, there's um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of talk um, about um, uh, Ms. Wu of California as the Secretary of Labor. So just check out uh, Harold Meyerson and the uh, great David Day and on the prospect. Meyerson will be with us on Monday. Uh, okay, it is... Um, uh, now time to talk with our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield, uh, of course, the renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. And I think we are about to get him. We have some technical issues there with uh, friends in Seattle, Washington. All right. Uh, aforementioned, our renaissance man is here. Uh, he is uh, the great Mark Taylor Canfield, the renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. Uh, happy Friday, Mark. How are you, man? Well, you know, I guess it's fashionable to be late. I'm sorry about that. We were actually <laughs> trying to get out on the water and lost cell phone coverage, and so I had to come back in to, sh- to land into shore. Um, oh, my God. Now, yeah, now it's good. Yeah, it's never happened before in this area, but I just got into a shadow there somewhere from the cell towers or something. So, But it's all good now. I've been like... Uh, needing a break because it's been a very challenging month, of course, and for many reasons, which we won't go into here, but I've right, also right. Um, been dealing with uh, the fallout of the election and stuff, and so um, I'm trying to get some stuff done in the studio, and as I texted you, I have found a drummer, the Holy Grail. The uh, I didn't have to patent um, drum catcher that I invented, which is a big cage that you just kind of drop on somebody like Dave Grohl. And then refuse to let him leave. He's doing his his thing with the Foo Fighters, but there are other cool bands um, coming up, by the way. And I, I should give a, a shout out before I talk about my home project is that Shayna Shepard did a set with Kim Thale from Soundgarden uh, as a tribute to Alice in Chains as part of that Mopops event. So that was really cool to see that, and it's so great to see my friend who I, who I basically grew up with as a musician getting this really um, important and well-deserved attention from these top-notch musicians in Seattle. I knew it was going to happen sooner or later because Shana Shepard is an incredible singer. She's probably the best singer in Seattle, so I knew it was just a matter of time before she would get her recognition. But we've all kind of hung out as a troupe, done a lot of shows together, and even had some um, jam nights at some of these clubs where we all hung out and supported each other. So it's great to see that. And then we've got the Black Tones, which was getting some national attention. They've been working with Mike McCready um, on this project that also involved some other really, really amazing people from the Seattle music scene um, raising money uh, for uh, health insurance to, so that musicians can afford health insurance. Yeah, um, let me let me ask you about a couple of points you just mentioned, if I could. Um, you know, we're talking with the great Mark Taylor Canfield here. Uh, you can go to Democracy Watch News. You can go to Mark Taylor Canfield on Twitter and find out more. But let me ask you about two things. You mentioned the Foo Fighters, a great uh, great band, one of my favorites. They were on the Fox NFL broadcast last night uh, of the Patriots Rams game, which I thought was very interesting to get their message out about their uh, next album. Uh, is this going to be ways in which, because of the pandemic, that bands you know look at different avenues? I don't recall you know other bands in the past going on football games or baseball games to promote their album. Uh, is is this going to be a new wave now? Because it's a little a little bit more difficult. Well, I mean, it's interesting seeing some of these people come out of the woodwork. We even had Billy Corgan, the uh, Smashing Pumpkins, you know, and Duff McKeon, um from you know, Velvet Revolver and 
and some of those great bands. Um, they, you know, coming out of the woodwork sort of and doing this stuff in the community. Also, I need to give a shout out to Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones, as I said, one of the most uh, energetic and exciting performers in Seattle, great rock and roll musician. Uh, he's also kind of a part of this new up and coming group in Seattle that's getting some, some major attention. So, yeah, I mean, I think musicians are going to have to step up and do whatever they need to do to both keep their names out there and then um, also to help out the community when need be. And, you know, we're still fighting to save the Showbox uh, music venue here, which is, you know, as I said before, Duke Ellington's played there, Muddy Waters, Jesse Rose, some amazing people. Um and I just walked, unfortunately, Jeff, I was just down in Belltown, and I walked by the, the grand old Crocodile, where I've seen some of the best bands in Seattle, and even some bands that aren't from Seattle, uh, like uh, really great bands from Minneapolis and stuff that would play there, like Deerhoof, I really like them. Um, and you know what? The, it's closed, and the windows are boarded up, so I hope that doesn't mean that that club is gone out of business, because, you know, long live rock and roll. We really have to keep this alive and whatever that takes, uh, whether it be musicians putting on benefits or, you know, running for office themselves and trying to pass laws that allow us to have this uh, great culture in Seattle and hold on to it, it's really, really important that we do that. Uh, another band I should sh give a shout-out to, Giants in the Trees. This is Chris Novoselic, the uh, bass player for um, Nirvana, has his own group now with a couple women, and it's a really cool band, too, so... There's some cool stuff happening in Seattle, and the talk on the street is, hey, did you see the tribute to Alice in Chains, and everybody's kind of talking about the music scene right now and what we can do to save it. Meanwhile, just on some quick political news, our Mayor Jenny Durkin is, has announced she's not running for re-election. She's also trying to get the city council to pay her $240,000 legal uh, fee for uh, fighting her recall election. Uh, then you've also got... Uh, 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 Denise Juno, who is a school board superintendent, who's stepping down. So a lot of the powerful women uh, in the area who have been kind of running things for a while, some of them are stepping down right now. Um, then we've got Mitzi um, Johannitsk, who's uh, the King County Sheriff, and her position may be eliminated because on the ballot this uh, in November was an, uh, an initiative to actually appoint the county sheriff instead of elect them because it was seen like uh, the, the rationale there was that it, it was kind of traditional for the King County Sheriff to get elected and then not be held accountable for the next four years, where if they're appointed, then they have to answer to the uh, King County Council at every meeting and things like that. So people thought of it as a, an accountability measure. And then one last thing, the, a federal judge has found the Seattle Police Department in contempt hmm. for using glass ball grenades and pepper spray on indiscriminately on demonstrators during the Black Lives Matter protests in Seattle. So what, no surprise to me and those of us who got it, you know, directly from uh, those so-called crowd control measures. But, uh, yeah, the Seattle Police Department is in trouble once again. Talking to Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show and this new time slot here on Friday afternoons in the 5 o'clock hour. Let me ask you, um, and I think that this is probably uh, the case for many of us that are not in, in rock and roll and in music, but um, is there this uh, hope that by June and July um, that people will once again be going to concerts, uh, that you'll be having a chance to play? Um, is there that kind of hope, uh, you know, now that we are, t are we hearing about vaccines and, you know, some people will be within weeks uh, having uh, the first uh, allotment and so forth. Um, is that target of summertime 2021, um, you know, something that, that you are planning for? And if, and if it doesn't happen, I, I think there would be tremendous disappointment. I mean, massive, because I think people are trying to look. I know I'm looking at that target, you know, of July 1st, July 4th, or whatever, if you want to celebrate it on America's birthday or whatever. But I, I'm wondering, because of your particular world of performing and performing, you know, in front of, you know, big crowds, that uh, that, that is in the back of your mind. Well, breaking news, the travel restrictions um, to Canada and Mexico have been extended through January 21st. So at least until January 
January 21st, it's not going to be easy to get across the border. Yeah. Uh, with the musician or anyone well, that's else. Why the NHL is having uh, a Canadian division and they don't want any of the American teams there uh, for a lot of reasons. But go ahead. Yeah, and, you know, not only do we miss the rock and roll shows, but, man, I was just saying on Facebook that I really miss the Bernie Sanders rallies because here, like at the right. Tacoma Dome event, it was like a rock concert with Portugal, the man performing, and a hip-hop group and Native American prayer okay. ceremonies and just amazing stuff going on. So I really miss that, uh, you know, being able to get in, into uh, the Tacoma Dome and, you know, pack it with tens of thousands of people. That would be great. Um, I think it's all up to... Uh, we put a lot of trust in our health department officials here in Washington State, and at least in this part of the state. And so I think we'll be waiting to see what the governor and the health inspectors have to say about that, Jeff. Um, but if, you know, hopefully, you know, cross your fingers, the, the, uh, between the, the, the sort of self-imposed quarantine we've all put ourselves on, and then also the vaccine, hopefully, yeah, uh, by summer things will clear up. And uh, we'll be able to have big, at least outdoor events. I mean, you know, I want to see Bumper Shoot and the Folklife Festival here and the free shows sponsored by KEXP, which are usually quite historic, at the uh, Mural Amphitheater stage, you know, just below the Space Needle there where I was talking to you from uh, just before Thanksgiving. That whole area uh, of the city is, is just prime for outdoor music concerts right in the middle of the city, and you've also got... Myrtle Edwards Park, which is right along Elliott Bay on the waterfront. There's a couple little beaches there where um, Hemp Fest usually happens, which, you know, attracts hundreds of thousands of people. So let's hope that by summer things have eased up, and at least for outdoor events, uh, we'll all have a place to play. I mean, that would be great. I look forward to the outdoor events in Seattle anyway because they're quite special, and there's much more of a sort of a festival feeling, like uh, like everybody's on vacation and taking a holiday at these festivals which is a little bit different than you know, going to a dark club at midnight or something. Yeah, no doubt. And I think, I think a lot of people in the summertime, particularly in, in the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast and Midwest, uh, where summer is not a, a, a round-the-year uh, like it is in Southern California or in uh, Florida and some other parts of the country, uh, you know, they, they want to be outside and they want to be celebrating with their fellow human beings, whatever sport or entertainment uh, event or, or just being able to sort of, you know, um, have a picnic with your closest uh, friends or family, um, you know, that you haven't seen in, in, in two months. I mean, I think people just want to be able to congregate. Uh, Mark, I know that uh, these are crazy times for you. Have yourself a great weekend, a safe uh, weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yes, and everybody check out my YouTube channel and keep rocking. Jeff, we really appreciate what you're doing, and uh, keep rock and roll alive, folks. We're going we're gonna to be rocking you soon, so check out. I have a new drummer, uh, Jim Dooley. He's amazing. I'm so psyched. We'll talk about that next time. See you later, Jeff. Thank you, Mark. Have a great weekend. You too, man. You too. And be safe out there in uh, Seattle, WA. Next week, of course, we'll have our regulars on and so forth and hope to get uh, some word from Atlanta, Georgia and Greg Palace on the on the uh, two races. They're going to focus on that. Also, some international stuff we'll tell you about, too. Keep on fighting, folks. That is important. Have a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and I got to go.